lecture. Mm, is it recording? Yes. So, uh, first of all, we have to deal with the uh, we have to deal with the mixture. Say, I'm going to have the reaction tower over here, and I try to produce uh, some alcohol or some industry uh, needed liquid solution. Let's say I'm going to have this uh, as an inlet one, uh, which would be methanol. And I'm going to have water as the inlet of two uh, into the tower. And uh, over here, you are going to have the uh, steady state flow process calculation, right? So this is a V1, the uh, uh, flow rate of methanol. This is a V2 for the pure component. And definitely you, you, you want to understand what would be the flow rate I have to control over the two inlets so that I'm going to uh, maintain a really nice uh, capacity of this uh, tower where I'm going to have the liquid phase of the liquid, which is uh, the uh, one and the two as a mixture, and I'm going to have the vapor. Again, I'm going to have the component both one and two over there. So this is why you, uh, you, you need to understand if I'm going to have this pure, V1 and V2 after this mixing process, I'm going to have this V total, right? So that is the V total over here. So how do I calculate, how do I control the flow rate so that I can take the best use of the, uh, of the tower and I don't overflow? So this is the uh, first question we need to think about. And along that direction, we need to look at the mixing process. And also we need to figure out how I'm going to calculate the total volume. I hope you recall that uh, here we are, we are going to use the uh, uh, partial molar volume to calculate it. So that would be X1 V1 partial plus X2 V2 partial. And then often we are also interested to look at this data V. This is the volume change uh, after this mixing process. What would be the change of uh, the volume? So that would be V total minus the other stuff, which is X1, V1, this is pure, uh, plus X2, V2 of the pure, right? So this is uh, the two properties we uh, are interested in. And secondly, now you are going to have the vapor, vapor and liquid. Two, compo two, compo two, two components, two faces over here. And I want to describe uh, how many uh, 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 species one in the vapor phase. So what would it be their ratio? So for the vapor, we are interested in understanding Y1 over Y2. For the liquid, I'm interested in the X1 over X2. And uh, uh, along that direction, if I'm going to manipulate temperature and pressure, what would be the change of those ratios? So that is also a question of interest to the industry. And over here, we need to somehow come up with the idea of uh, understanding the ratio change. For the vapor, now we, we shall feel happy that we have uh, uh, the so-called, uh, so this is where we are introducing the uh, uh, chemical potential and the fugacity that is needed for the multiple component, multiple phase problems. So over there, we need to somehow recall this is, uh, this is uh, D mu I is RT D log FI. That is the definition of fugacity. And moving forward, we were looking at the calculation of fugacity. Uh, now, instead of using this uh, uh, fugacity FY, we have uh, some coefficients defined. Uh, number one is uh, this phi i is defined as FI over PI, right? So that is the definition. And we also have uh, uh, this uh, uh, AI is defined as FI over FI standard. 
So this is standard. And then we also have that activity coefficient, which is gamma i is defined as a i over x i. Okay. So if we think about the vapor phase, for the vapor, we have the choices of uh, ideal gas. Uh, we have the choices of uh, uh, the direct calculation. So uh, we, we, we say this is the V, no. We have the set of TPX, TVX, and sometimes we also have Henry's law. If we are looking at the uh, low solubility stuff, right? So we have some understanding of log phi i. Let's make it a little bit better in terms of writing as a function of TPX or TVX, okay? So now if you think about the liquid, what, what do I have? So we mentioned that uh, one choice is, well, let's convert everything into the vapor. So one is look for the, look for the corresponding vapor phase and figure it out. And we are going to discuss the other choice today. So we are going to come up with uh, the ways that we are going to calculate the, uh, very similarly, how I'm going to express this as a function of something uh, to interpret this TPX or TVX. So let's try to be fair, let's try to uh, have this corresponding activity coefficient. This is the fugacity coefficient. Let's try to figure it out over here. So that is the main idea of uh, looking at those. And along that direction, I also want to have a separate uh, note on a few stuff. First of all, we, 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 we need to identify when would be the pure, when would be the pure, when would be the mixture and uh, somehow we have this partial. So uh, note on the note on the symbol. So here we, if I have the V total, then very likely this is for mixture. Okay, if I have VI, very likely this is for pure. If I need to describe the component of the mixture phase, then I need to have a head. Okay, so this is for a component one of mixture. All right, we also have the other type of head. This is V1, this one. This is a partial molar property. Okay, so those would be the nodes you uh, you need to uh, familiar yourself with uh, those uh, symbols. And overall, we were interested in those properties. We, we say this is a capital M. We are interested in the four energy equation, internal, uh, ASP, uh, Helmholtz, uh, Gibbs energy, and. Very often we are also interested in the volume and entropy. Okay, moving forward, we are able to even even describe the uh, say the fugacity as a function of something. So uh, we can also put fugacity in this group uh, of those interesting properties. So those were the connections we have. Why we are interested in the mixing? Why we try to look at the uh, pure component and the mixture and figure out what would be the changes. Simply because we need to have the control over the production line and we need to have a, a better way of uh, predicting what's going on over there. 
So now coming back to the uh, lectures, uh, to the lecture materials we were talking about the uh, last time, we were talking about the excess property, which is defined here on this uh, slide. The excess is uh, the difference between the real and the ideal. So uh, pay attention that here we don't need to we don't need to go back to the standard state. Okay, so this is still the pressure of interest, the real temperature and pressure and the, the, the exact composition. But here, the only assumption is that we are going to have the ideal liquid, uh, meaning those uh, intermolecular in interactions of all those components in the mixture, they are, they are identical. <clears throat> so that is the assumption we have over here. So there you can see that we don't have a really good uh, starting point for the excess property calculation. Uh, very different from the residual property. We say this is a residual. This is mainly for the liquid. And for the vapor, we have the corresponding uh, residual property. Then this is N, uh, N ideal. So over here, because it's a vapor, so we can easily manipulate or replace this M ideal using the ideal gas equation, right? And we can easily figure out lots of calculations over there. But for the liquid, we don't have too, too many useful equations. So this is why we need to start with uh, uh, some property we were talking about over there. Uh, over here, I want to add two notes. One, uh, we don't have time to, to derive all of those properties. So this is why I just provide this as a, as a statement or as a conclusion. Two, you don't need to memorize those equations, uh, but you need to somehow develop the feeling that uh, I need to put together some notes. When I'm looking at the uh, vapor phase, I know what to do, starting from the ideal gas. Uh, when I'm dealing with the uh, Excess property calculation, I probably need to connect that with the mixing process. Okay, so this is how we we uh, we developed the, the discussions last time. <clears throat> Over here, uh, that that is a pure, like we just discussed for the mixing process change, the property change over there. And then. Uh, when we were uh, talking about those, we uh, also developed some very useful equation. I hope you still, uh, you still recall that uh, uh, we have two. The first one is quite obvious. So for a mixture, this is a mixture. We have to use the partial molar property to describe the mixture. So that is the summation of xi and i of the component i, but partial. Okay. So that is the first important equation. The second important equation is uh, how we connect each partial molar property with uh, the remaining of others. So uh, that is uh, saying, well, I try to use uh, the uh, two component system. I hope you recall that this N1 partial is, is uh, expressed as M minus X2, the other component, partial derivative dN over dX2. This is the uh, two components so this is TP. Okay. And we can also modify utilizing uh, x1 plus x2 was would be one. So we can utilize this to simplify this is n minus, say this is uh, uh, one minus x1. Uh, and then we have partial derivative over dn over dx1 tp. Then we need to change that into a plus because uh, because dx1 is negative dx2, okay? So last time we were talking about how we can uh, utilize this equation to look at various properties, all right? So moving forward, uh, we are going to discuss a few other equations 
uh, to use for the liquid phase, especially how we are going to connect over here. That is uh, the uh, two equations we are going to discuss. How we are going to look at this uh, now, it's uh, the time for the activity and activity coefficient to join us in the discussion, okay? So over here, we are going to use uh, this as uh, the uh, Gibbs access property. I provided the, uh, the proof here in the slides, uh, but I have no plan to go over those uh, slides we, uh, into details. So the bottom line is, uh, if we try to look at this equation, and those would be the correct equations, okay? So that means if this is the excess Gibbs energy over RT, then this is the summation of XI log gamma I, all right? And if this is a mixing, mixing property change of the Gibbs energy is delta G over RT, is the summation of xi log activity coefficient xi. So I want to point out that we, we, we have the general equation. If we are calculating any, uh, any property of the mixture, we use this as n of the mixture. is a summation of xi of mi partial. Okay. So okay. What, what I want to point out is that we, we are able to identify two pairs. So for example, this is the excess Gibbs energy over RT. Then the corresponding partial molar property of that term is uh, this one. So the other pairs using the understanding of uh, partial molar property and the uh, property of the mixture. Similarly, over here, you are going to have delta G over RT. That is a pair of natural log Xi Come on. So if we think about the definition of partial molar property, that tells us that this term <clears throat> is what? Is uh, this partial molar property of delta G of RT while keeping the temperature pressure and other terms fixed. So that is from the definition. Of partial molar property. Are we good so far? Yes. Fine as I can be, I guess. We are using nothing special but the understanding of the previous equation. How do we calculate the mixture property? The answer is we need to use the corresponding partial molar property. Okay. If I'm calculating V total, then I need to use Xi Vi partial. So that's a pair of the volume and the corresponding partial molar volume. So the, the little bit of weird stuff over here is uh, we are able to connect this excess Gibbs energy as the uh, corresponding term for this log gamma i. So they are the pairs of the mixture and corresponding partial molar property of that quantity, okay? On the other side, when we look at the mixing of uh, uh, the Gibbs energy change, then this delta G over RT is a corresponding mixing property. And the uh, partial molar property of that quantity would be log 
xi gamma i. Okay. So here is what we uh, we just utilized to uh, to derive this uh, uh, partial molar excess property. Uh, very similar to the recent exam, I was asking you to calculate this uh, uh, residual property uh, of something, and uh, 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 we did not have that discussion, but you should be able to follow the standard definition and figure that out. Uh, so that is the first equation uh, I want to introduce, and the second one is uh, this one. We call this as a Gibbs to Hem equation. And again, uh, I provided the way how we can derive this equation. Uh, so uh, check out the slides. Uh, so if we think about that, uh, we have the previous equation, which is N of the mixture is the summation of Xi and I partial. So that is the first useful equation. Uh, and what we have over here is, uh, well, if I'm going to put this uh, uh, xi, now I'm going to add, let me try to change it the color. Oh, now I'm changing all color. So that is the d and I still this is a partial molar property. I'm going to have this as zero. Try to look at the uh, two equations and uh, identify the difference. If we stick with that equation, then we could have all sorts of equations. Let's say if I'm interested in the volume, then this is the partial molar volume, this should be zero. If I'm interested in this, uh, uh, NGP, then I have this term would be zero, okay? And over here, we have the uh, note that this equation would be most useful. We quite often use this equation for many calculations. So here we, we utilize this, uh, this Gibbs to Hamel equation for partial molar Gibbs energy, okay? So I hope you see what is coming uh, in the uh, next uh, slides. So here we are looking at this liquid phase. For the liquid, especially for the mixture, we need to understand this X, we need to understand the uh, activity, we need to understand the activity coefficient And we are able to identify some quantity, whether it's delta G over RT, or this is the excess Gibbs energy over RT. I have these two quantities. They should be able to connect with, uh, or Okay, so this is why we now try really hard to somehow develop useful equations to describe those terms. So on top of that, now we introduce uh, this as a uh, Gibbs to Hamer equation. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to uh, skip the uh, next few slides. Uh, so. Uh, if you take a look at how we, we derive the Gibbs to Hamer equation, nothing special. We just we just write down this uh, mixture property as a, a function of the corresponding control parameters. Then we take a full derivative. We are going to have those terms, right? So this is uh, the uh, way uh, of our previous discussions. We always try to write down the full derivative and now we try to uh, somehow simplify. So that is still the uh, uh, utilizing the partial molar property. So here we are going to have this term, and the the other two terms would be exactly the same as the previous equation. So 
this equation one is simply the repeat from uh, the equation on slide seven. And now we somehow develop the other form of what well, the four derivative uh, of this, uh, this property. So now we try to treat this as uh, uh, the sum of the two terms in the equation two. Now we try to compare equation one and, and equation two. We figure out these two are identical. Meaning I need to have that two shall be identical, right? So this is why we, we, we are having this term and now if you divide by M on both sides, you are going to return to this uh, uh, molar fraction in the liquid phase utilizing XI. And if you try to, if you try to add this uh, limitation, we are looking at this fixed temperature and pressure process, then this term would be zero because DT is zero. DP would be zero as well. So this is zero term meaning the whole summation term would be zero. Uh, this is the actual proof of uh, the gibbs to Hamm equation. Okay. So you need to at fix the temperature and, and, and pressure, we are going to have uh, this gibbs to Hamm equation. After we have that equation, then uh, for a binary system, uh, we checked on that equation to see what would be the forms we are going to use. So this is the uh, original form uh, from the submission sign, and uh, uh, moving to the next one, we try to we try to divide on both sides by dx one, right? So we are we are dividing both uh, terms for dx one. And then we try to we try to remove this term to the other side of the equation. So that would be minus x2 dm2 over dx1. Right. And dx1 is uh, negative. So this is why now pay attention that we are turning on both sides with respect to its own molar ratio. If I'm looking at the component one, then this is x1, dx1, this would be component two, x2 and dx2. Okay. So I'm manipulation of uh, x1 and x2. And again, as we uh, as we uh, mentioned, we are mostly interested in the four energy equations plus volume and entropy. Let's try to use this uh, first example to uh, have a better understanding and uh, how to utilize the Gibbs to Helm equation. So here is the problem. Well, and for this part, you'll see that we we always provide. A, temperature and the pressure. Uh, but often we, we just need that information. We don't use uh, temperature and pressure uh, for any assistance in the calculation. So now we said we are going to have this uh, methanol and uh, liquid water again. And I have a molar volume, partial molar volume for water that is expressed by this equation. Okay. And we also have the condition that uh, this is the V1, this is the pure. And we need to calculate the partial molar volume for methanol and the total volume of the liquid mixture V at this condition. So we need to calculate 
You need to calculate V1 partial. And we also need to calculate the total volume, V total. So let's try to uh, run the analysis. Well, for v, V1 and V2, uh, we understand that if, if I have this V1 and V2, then the total would be X1, V1 partial plus X2, V2 partial, right? So that is how we calculate the uh, mixture. And in order to figure out V1, uh, from the previous discussion, we know this is V minus X2 dV over dX2 at this fixed temperature and pressure. However, we, we don't know this total volume yet. So that pass that does not work. Uh, for this problem. But we have the other equation now with the, with the Gibbs to Hamel equation. Now we can have the equation of uh, say, this is uh, X1 D V1 over DX1 should be X2 DV2 over DX2. Right. So if we use that Gibbs to Helm equation, and we know, no, we know that uh, we know that we have this partial molar property of uh, V two. So we shall we shall be able to simplify the term on the right hand side. Right. We need to modify this as one minus X2 turn. And then we shall be able to take this partial derivative. And then multiply this by X2. This will be the term we are going to need. And then if I try to manipulate, then I shall be able to have this D V1 partial. If I modify this a little bit, then I should be able to express this as a function as x1, right? So once we receive that, if I, if I take the integral from some initial to the final x1, then I shall be able to have the equation of V1 partial. So that would be the general analysis of the problem. But of course we need to figure out what is the initial value we are going to use. And I want to emphasize that in this, in this part, we, 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 we have to have a really good understanding how to pick up the uh, integrals. Especially you need to look for some uh, special points, special conditions, so that we can quickly understand the quantity. I'll show you in the following examples, what do I mean by those initial and what do I mean by those would be the standard uh, special points you are going to use. So if we look at this, uh, uh, the solution of this example, so we start with the Gibbs to Hamel equation, we, uh, we try to manipulate this equation. So we, uh, we move the turn on the, to the uh, right-hand side, we divide on both sides by the uh, X1. So we have the turn and this would be uh, DV2. So from the provided information, uh, V2. Is that right? Yeah. So from here, uh, I hope we are able to figure out this dv2 would it be negative 6.4. This is a one 
minus x1. And now, let's try to write this. This is d of Okay, so this is how we get this equation over there. So keep that negative sign, keep this negative sign. Uh, and then we are going to cancel x1. And then we are going to also replace this dx1 by this dx2. So this is why you are going to cancel the two sign out, but uh, when you try to have this uh, dx2 is minus dx1. You see the why you still, in the end, you still have this negative sign in front of the equation, okay? So this is the, uh, this is the uh, expression for the v1 partial. Now we need to run this integral and here we pick up this zero and the, the x2 of interest. And then this is the correspondence. So if x2, is zero, meaning x1 is one, meaning I'm going to have this v1. This is pure, okay? So this is why over here, I'm having the v1, the corresponding v1 at x2 goes zero. And I'm going, when I'm having a <coughs> general x2, then I need to use v1 partial to describe the component one in the mixture, okay? So this is why for the for that equation on the left-hand side, this is V1 partial minus V1 uh, out of the uh, integral of that for derivative and to the right-hand side, that would be the term. And from the problem statement, we know the V1 value, uh, this is provided. So now when you put that information together, you derive this uh, partial model property for component one. Okay. So the most challenging part for us, I think it should be those. How do I come up with uh, the uh, value for X2 goes zero. This is corresponding to the pure component of V1. So I would suggest that we pay attention and try to double check on those uh, calculations. So now if I have this uh, uh, V1, the partial molar of volume one, and I know V2 partial, then this is the volume of the mixture. So that is a mixture. Okay. Then you try to simplify. And, and if needed, you are able to convert everything as a function of, of x1 or x2. So simply you can, you can uh, replace x1 by one minus x2. Then you are going to have the equation uh, purely as uh, x2. All right. All right. So moving forward, let's try to take a look at the uh, other equations we, we can have. First of all, let's try to look at this one. Now we say at the fixed temperature, we call that for this part, we are always utilizing fixed temperature and pressure. For most, most problems, we don't need to worry about the temperature and pressure um, term. So here we, 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 uh, we want to remind us ourselves on this uh, so that we don't feel lost or confused about those nodes. So uh, the uh, equations here are still trying to convince you that uh, we need to pay attention on those uh, various symbols. So if I have the pure component, I simply put Fi, F is the fugacity. And if I have this component I in the mixture, then I'd better add the hat. So this is a Fi with the hat, meaning now I'm interested in the component I in the mixture. 
And for the mixture itself, then this is simply F without uh, I or J without any head. Okay. So uh, similarly, if we write down this uh, uh, equation for the Gibbs energy, uh, let's start with the middle one. I hope you still recall that uh, we, we derived that mu i is uh, the partial molar property of Gibbs energy uh, from the definition of chemical potential. So this is how we uh, write down this equation dGi of the partial is d mu i is rt d log fi with the head. So that is still in the mixture. And then uh, we need to add the note to what's going on if I'm going to have this extremely low pressure, pressure goes zero, then this would be the uh, ideal case. And uh, well, we also have the uh, fugacity coefficient definition. So uh, nothing special. Okay. Now I have this, this slide. Uh, as I explained at the beginning of, of today's lecture, here we are interested in identifying the crystal bonding pairs for property. With the corresponding partial molar property. You can see that for the um, most quantities, it's straightforward. If, if this is the V volume, then I, I need to look for this VI partial, right? Here the note is now if you are looking at uh, G, the Gibbs energy, we are going to have two special terms. This one is delta G over RT, one is uh, G excess over RT, okay? And they are coming from, we, we need to identify the corresponding partial molar property of that two. And they are coming from uh, the slide here we have. So if you are looking at this term, this is the fugacity over Xi. Here is the fugacity coefficient. Now, if you look at the corresponding, corresponding partial molar property, you're not, you're not going to write down this is as Fi now I'm going to have a double head. Let me think this is my corresponding partial moral property. No, that's not the case. And that is not fugacity coefficient. I try to add another head. No, that does not work. Okay. So the, okay. the correspondence is, uh, this is the property of the mixture. This is a property of the mixture. And uh, their corresponding partial moral property is uh, over here. Okay. In other way, if we try to use uh, uh, the previous the previous equation, so I hope you recall these two equations. We discussed the, the previous lecture. Now we try to say now the N of interest is, uh, is uh, F of the component I over Xi. Nothing special, we try to evaluate this property, and I need to identify what is the corresponding partial molar property. Okay, so this is what I okay. have over here. Now we need to utilize this is log F. Now I have to look for 
if I have this log f, then I, I, I need to look for log fi of xi. So that is the mixture. That is the component i. So they are the pairs for the partial model property. And if indeed that is the case, then then I have the component one, let's say I have a binary system, then this is F1 in the mixture, this is X1, then this is a total, total is log F minus the other component minus X2, uh, partial derivative over the total log F over X2 with uh, temperature pressure fixed. So that's exactly the equation I have over here. And then you can write on this uh, other term for uh, for component two, and you can uh, manipulate. Now I'm going to have this uh, log. If we look at the uh, fugacity coefficient, then this is the coefficient of the total. The corresponding part is uh, okay. So that is the total, that is the component. I. And if I need to write down this equation, then let's say still this is a binary system. So that's component one, component one in the mixture is the difference between the total minus the other component X2 partial derivative of the total over dx2 at temperature pressure fixed, right? So the key is we need to identify the pairs for the partial molar property. Okay, moving forward. Let's look at this example two to get familiar with uh, the equation we just had, which is the connection between the uh, fugacity and fugacity coefficient. How do we derive the, the corresponding partial molar property? So the problem says for a gas mixture of 20% molar percent of A, uh, 35B and 45C at uh, this, this is the pressure, this is the temperature, uh, we know the fugacity coefficient for each component. And we need to calculate the fugacity of the gas mixture. So we have this A in the mixture, A, B in the mixture, C in the mixture. Those values are known. And we need to calculate this is a mixture. Fugacity coefficient. Uh, well, we need to calculate the fugacity. Okay, this is F of the mixture. If, uh, for example, if I know the fugacity coefficient, and I shall know this of the mixture is uh, F the fugacity of the mixture over P total, which is 6.08 MPa, right? So in order to calculate the fugacity of the mixture, I could uh, revise and calculate the fugacity coefficient of the mixture. Then what is the fugacity coefficient of the mixture? Now, if you think about what we just discussed, this is the corresponding pair. And you may come up with the equation that, yes, this is a total, right? This is the fugacity coefficient. And I should have this summation, yi log 
because that is the total property that is a corresponding partial molar property. Then I finish the calculation. Why I or those are provided. So that is how we, we identify what would be the corresponding pair. And now we have the working equation to solve. So that's indeed what I have on the solution. This should be why I. So we identify the correspondence, we, we set up the equation and all those terms, uh, they are known, they're provided in the problem statement. So by doing this, I figure out the fugacity coefficient for the mixture and I utilize the definition of fugacity coefficient to calculate the fugacity. This is the total pressure. And the value is also provided, right? So it's MPA. So, so the problem here is we, we, we need to get familiar with uh, those uh, sort of irregular terms uh, connecting the property of the mixture and the partial, the corresponding partial molar property. Uh, and the second potential challenge is if we have to run this integration to derive the uh, ex expression, then we need to figure out what would be the useful special points to use uh, uh, for the problem. Dr. Hall? Yep. Did we use um, ln of phi is approximately this ln of phi i because it's more than two components. If it was a binary system, would we use the Gibbs-Dunham equations? Uh, I'm, I'm a little bit confused by your question itself. I think we have two different ways. Uh, one is if I know, for example, if I, if I use the V1, V2, okay? If I know V1, V2, then I can calculate V uh, total. V total, thank you. On the other side, if I know V1, I can also calculate V2 partial. This is with the Gibbs to Hamel equation, right? Mm -hmm. And on the other side, if the problem statement provides V, we uh we want partial of v then we can try to use the previous equation which is uh, v uh, two partial is uh, v minus x1 dv over dx1 right yeah so that is the other way of uh, uh, using the, uh, the previous useful equation for the calculation. So I, I think key, the key here is you need to evaluate uh, which would be easy to calculate. You may have multiple ways to solve the problem. I, th I think I have one example later uh, on this slide to show you that you have two different ways solving the same problem. And of course, if you are going to have multiple, like we have over here, now we have three components, then you just need to, for example, now this is V3, right? So if I need to calculate one, two, three, V3 partial would be uh, V over the total minus X1 dV over dX1, TP fixed, minus X2 dV over dX2. So you just need you just need to start from the the general equation and write down which is a working equation for you. Do I answer your question? Thank you. Yes. Yes. Okay. Let's take a look at another example. 
Suppose we have a molar volume model for a binary solution, V, that's a V total. Now we need to derive the excess partial molar volume. Oh, that's a little bit. So we, we, we know V, right? Now we need to calculate this V1 excess partial. We need to know V2 excess over the partial. That's a little bit confusing because we, we understand that if I know, if I know, if I know V excess, then I may be able to figure out how. How do I figure out if I have this V excess, the total excess volume? Suppose I know this, how do I calculate this V1 partial excess, V2 partial excess? Would you be able to use the Gibbs theorem equation? Uh, the gibbs Hamilton equation will tell me that uh, x1, v1 partial is the same as, uh, no. Right? So that means if I know this v1, if I know this term, then I shall be able to calculate the next term. That is coming out of the, the Gibbs to Hamilton equation. But the question is, if I know this, if you, yeah. If you know, you know V, so you can find like delta V and that equals V excess because we're working with volume. No? <laughs> uh, that is a useful equation, uh, equation for the next step, but here, if I know VE, if I know the VE, then we just use a definition of partial molar volume. So that is the answer I'm, I'm hoping to have. So that is nothing special, but just V of E over DMI, DM1. Or depending on how you have the equation. If I have this as a, as, a part, uh, as a specific total volume, then I use dV over dx1 for the V1 partial. If I have this uh, expressed as N1 and N2, like this NV, then I'd better use d over N1. That is the same partial molar volume. So if I have this uh, excess volume for the total, in order to calculate this uh, excess partial molar volume for one, then we just utilize the definition of partial molar property. Now, coming back to then, how do we calculate V of E? That we need to connect with uh, this data V like you just mentioned. So that is the analysis. How, how do I start with this uh, one single sentence and try to figure out how do I calculate uh, the corresponding terms so that I can have the useful working equations. Okay. And uh, now the question is how do I calculate data V? So we are able to turn the calculation into the data V and that would be the, now this is a V total 
minus minus what or Right. This is how we have for the total. This is uh, we are just utilizing the Q volume for one and two, and and calculate if we ignore the mixing mixing property change, what would be the quantity we have, and put that two together, we should have the the data V. So this is data V. Okay. Looks like we need to have more exercises so that we are happy with this equation. Theta n, n of the total minus x, x, i, n, i. And to find um, V1 partial and V2 partial, we would just take the derivative of V, right? Yes. With respect to one of the components. Yeah, and here okay. we have those. So the, this is a quite challenging problem because it, it requires the connection between various, various definitions and various working equations. Let me finish that. This is the summation of Xi and I partial minus summation of Xi of Ni. This is a pure, this is a partial. Okay, now if I move forward, I hope you are not very surprised in what we are doing. So we try to figure out this uh, total excess volume and that is the same as the mixing volume. Uh, see previous slide. Well, the app is, is really bad. They don't allow me to write properly. And that is the total, we have that equation. So this is the equation provided and we need to figure out V1 and V2. How do I figure out V1 and V2, by the way? You would just, um replace all X2s with X1s to find V1? No, okay. The answer is from that equation, you are partially correct. Uh, so here, if I put X, then I'm going to have V2. Right, so I don't have any component of x one, uh, any component of one. Then this expression would be for pure v two. Similarly, if I put x two goes zero, then I'm going to receive the expression for pure v one. So starting from this equation, we put x2 goes zero, we receive v1. Similarly, we put x1 goes zero, we receive v2. 
now you have this v you have the uh, v1 expression you have this v2 expression then you know this v access property So this is what we have. So this is the excess volume over here. So over here, we can use uh, two different ways. One is now we can use the definition of uh, V1 excess is uh, I probably need to update my app. So I don't know what's going on. For VE of the end one. This is the other way, or we can use uh, the previous equation we, we discussed, right? So this is the V1. Now we try to look at with respect to the other component for the binary system. So the total minus X2 partial derivative with respect to dx2 will give me the uh, V1 partial. Similarly, if I'm interested in calculating V2 partial uh, excess property, then this is the total of the excess property with respect to the other component X1. Okay, so does that make sense? Yeah. I believe the most challenging part is uh, how do I go from This is the most critical equation to think of. So let's try to have the uh, other practice with the last term. So now we are looking at, uh, uh, so we, we just discussed the Think of what's the corresponding partial model property. Fugacity, think of what's the corresponding uh, partial model property. So now we are going to look at the activity and its coefficient. So here, we need to figure out what is the corresponding partial model property. Okay. So uh, if we move on, uh, as we discussed, let's try to have the pair. This is GE of RT is corresponding to. So that is a total property. That is a partial molar property. Like I have over here, if this is the partial model property, then we show able to write down this equation using the partial model property definition. So this is the total excess Gibbs energy divided by, by RT, uh, the MI show give me the corresponding partial model property. Okay, so 
we can write down so for the Gibbs energy, uh, no, for the, the total Gibbs energy, it's corresponding partial moral property of component I is this one. If I have this residual, then the corresponding partial moral property is uh, this one. If I have excess of the total, then the corresponding partial moral property is GI of this one. But if you have the activity coefficient, then you need to divide this by RT. And I don't want to, uh, and I don't want to show you the proof. Uh, following slides are just uh, the uh, the previous discussions about um, the fugacity, especially those coefficients. Uh, to recall, what is that gamma i uh, as the activity coefficient? And how do we go back from the, the general fugacity coefficient or activity coefficient to the uh, special cases? And we need to use those in order to solve the problems. So let's try to have the, uh, the uh, working equation and let's try to, before we have time, let's try to look at one example. So this is the equation we are going to uh, have. Uh, it's still coming out of the previous set. Uh, partial, how do I relate the partial to the difference between the total and uh, the uh, partial derivative? And keep in mind, this is a pair. This is a total. This is a partial. This is a total property. Okay. So let's uh, uh, take a look at the last example of today's lecture. So now we, we have the excess Gibbs energy model for a binary solution. And A is uh, expressed as a function of temperature. When you have a different temperature, then the, then the equation will change, of course. So we have this GE of RT, and we need to derive the activity coefficient expression for the two components. So we have this equation. We are asked to, to, to derive the activity coefficient which means I need to have this one and two, right? If I know one, then using the equation, the two would be GE of RT minus X1 partial derivative of GE of RT dX1. So basically, we need to figure out how do we how do I calculate this uh, uh, activity coefficient of one. Well, if we identify this is a pair, then the uh, most direct way would be just utilize the definition of partial moral property, which is uh, one is. Uh, Right, they are the pair, and in order to calculate the partial moral property of one component, I can just take the partial, partial derivative of the total, of the corresponding total. And that's actually how we are going to solve for this problem. So if we take a look at the solution, uh, we recall this is the pair. And over here, we need to we need to uh, start from the known equation. We need to convert that if I'm going to use uh, mi instead of x1 or x2. And then moving forward, you shall be able to uh, write down the equation for the log activity coefficient one. And the other way is that we, we, we try to start from this equation. So this is a pair and we are going to have GE over RT uh, is the difference between 
the partial derivative with the other component. This is known. Uh, we, we just need to figure out this one as a function of partial derivative of x2. What would be the expression? Pay attention that we, we probably need to convert that equation as a is just a constant as a temperature. This is one x minus x2 and x2. So if you do that, that, that will be a little bit easier to figure out the partial derivative with respect to x2, okay? So at is the constant, you can put it in the front. We just need to figure out this one. So uh, I think that's all I have for today's lecture. I do want to, I do want to mention that uh, you may, you may have the question why we need to uh, do with this one. That is because if you use a definition, we need to use it correctly. This form, this is the form. We call, we had a discussion that uh, in the uh, mathematical calculation, uh, we are able to convert dn over dmi sort of the same as dn over dxi. But for the definition of partial molar property, we need to stick with this as a definition. So this shall be the total as a function of uh, uh, number of moles. This is the that is the specific total, which is the total divided by more. Okay. So this is why uh, we better stay safe uh, and figure out what is the standard definition. This is why we try to figure out this one and run the partial derivative. Okay, that's all I have. Uh, so in today's lecture, we have quite a few equations, uh, important equations, and we uh, have to be comfortable with uh, the connection of those various equations. Now we have uh, at least three sets of equations. Uh, we need to think about those equations and under which condition shall we use what equation to, to solve the problem. So that is a, uh, a question to everybody. And I hope that you can come back, visit the examples and the uh, examples in that uh, chapter. Okay, that's all I have. Uh, we'll come back uh, on example five uh, this Thursday. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Kana. Thank you.